Hello everyone and welcome back to Cyberkin Productions. Today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Friends and Foe of the 13th Doctor set. So let's jump into it. Starting off with the box, it has the same colour scheme as previous B&M sets, with the blue covering the majority of the box with the white for text. The art style is slightly different on the set, with the TARDIS being the 13th Doctors instead of the tents. The picture of the TARDIS and Gallifreyan text is present on different segments of the box. The Doctor Who logo is shown at the top, Friends and Foe of the 13th Doctor at the bottom, and some text in the bottom right states they are in the 5 inch range and part of the Collector series. A large window covers the front of the box that spills over to the right side to get a better view of the figures. Also on the window is the limited edition sticker, which I have always found to be pointless. The left side of the box is a picture of the TARDIS, and the right side is plain, aside from the bubble of text telling you the set includes Yaz Khan, Ryan Sinclair and Jadadoon Trooper. The back features pictures of the figures in the set, with their names underneath them. The rest is repeated information, aside from the legal gobbledygook in the bottom right. The top has more repeated information, apart from the added character options website URL, and the bottom just features a ton of legal gobbledygook. Now with the box out of the way, let's take a look at the figures. So here they are, Yaz, Ryan and the Jadoon. They actually look really good. Let's put Ryan and the Jadoon aside to get a better in-depth look at Yasmin Khan. Starting off, this figure is taken from another primeval figure mould, specifically Claudia Brown, with the head being the only new part of the figure. The outfit is from Arachnids in the UK and is pretty well done. The top doesn't match, but the rest is very close. Her dark brown hair is fantastic, with sculpting detail for the hair buns and strands going down her chest and back. The face sculpt is excellent and really looks like Mandip Gill. The paint detail for her face with the eyes, eyebrows and mouth is brilliant too, with them all being very sharp. Some paint detail has even been applied to her ears to represent her earrings. Moving down you can see that horrendous neck joint. Her white top features some creasing and wrinkling effect and some detail for the unbuttoned collar and the button join going down the middle. Her brown jacket features some creasing and wrinkling effect as well as indentations to represent the stitching lines. Her arms are covered by the jacket which also continues the creasing and wrinkling effect. Some sculpted detail for buttons can even be seen on her cuffs. Her hands are sculpted well with it showing her individual fingers, thumbs and even her nails. Moving further down you can see the brown belt with the silver belt buckle. Her blue trousers feature more creasing and wrinkling effect as well as some added detail for her pockets on her rear that don't quite match up with each other. Finally, her brown boots at the bottom with nothing underneath, which is very surprising. Turning to articulation, her head can be moved, but it is hindered by the hair. The hair is made from a thin plastic, allowing you to move her head without too much tension. There's a 360 degree twist on her shoulder, 360 degrees at the top of the arm, 90 degrees at the elbow, and a stiff 360 degree twist on the wrist. There's a 360 degree twist on the waist, her legs can do the splits, kick out around 45 degrees, 360 degrees at the top of the leg, and finally a 90 degree bend on the knee. So some really good articulation for Yaz. So overall, I think Yaz is excellent. The face sculpt is brilliant, the outfit doesn't quite match up with the episode, but it's really close and definitely one of the best uses of a pre-existing mould. Moving to Ryan, like Yaz, his body is taken from another primeval figure mould, specifically Nick Cutter, with the head being the only new part of the figure. The outfit is taken from Rosa, which the figure body used doesn't match up with it very well. The jacket doesn't resemble the actual outfit at all. Pretty disappointing so far. His hair is very well done, matching his hairstyle perfectly. You can see detail for the top of his hair, as well as the shaved sides. The face sculpt is good, but not quite there. It just looks a little off, but it does resemble Tosin Cole. The paint detail for the eyes, eyebrows and mouth are nice and sharp. His light blue shirt can be seen under the collar of his blue coat. His coat features creasing or wrinkling effect, as well as sculpted detail for the pockets, buttons and button join. His arms are covered by the jacket, which also continues the creasing and wrinkling effect. His hands are sculpted well, with it showing his individual fingers, thumbs and even his nails. Moving down are his grey trousers that feature some creasing and wrinkling effect, and finally his black boots that feature some light sculpting detail to represent the patterns on the boots, and unlike Yaz, there is some Lego gobbledygook underneath. Turning to articulation, his head can move but is hindered by the collar and is very stiff so I would avoid turning it. There's a 360 degree twist on his shoulder, 360 degrees at the top of the arm, 90 degrees at the elbow and a 360 degree twist on the wrist. There's a 360 degree twist on the waist, his legs can only be spread slightly as it's hindered by the coat. They can kick out around 45 degrees, 360 degrees at the top of the leg and finally a 90 degree bend on the knee. So some really good articulation for Ryan. So overall, I think Ryan is decent. 
The face sculpt is good, but it looks a little off. The outfit doesn't really match the episode, as he had his coat open, not closed. But it's great to get Ryan nonetheless. Finally, we have the Jadoon Trooper, that is going to be very similar to Jadoon Captain we got earlier in the year. So I won't go into crazy detail here. Go check out that review if you want a better in-depth look of the Jadoon. This figure is a re-release of the Jadoon Trooper from 2007-8, with one key difference, which is the lack of the accessory holes in the belt area. They're filled in the holes so the figure can't hold any accessories at all. I really dislike this and can't think why they would do this. Starting off with the helmet, it looks brilliant with some very good sculpted detail for the various lines going around the helmet. The chest features sculpted detail to represent the muscles and the sides features some clasps and buckles and the back features indentations and some sculpted detail. The arms feature the shoulder pads, upper arm guards and wrist guards and finally the hands are both gloved with some added armour detail. The hands are sculpted nicely with them featuring individual fingers and thumbs. The right hand is sculpted to hold the new or old gun while the left is sculpted to hold the reader or translator. Moving to the waist, the belt features more clasps and buckles on its sides. You can even make out where the gun holster would have been, which is even more of a gut punch. The skirt section is flexible with some silver studs on the ends, and the boots feature more clasps with some detail for the laces. And finally, the bottom of the boots features some more legal gobbledygook. The Jadoon comes with one accessory, which is the new gun. The gun is sculpted very well, and is very well detailed for its small size. As stated before, the weapon can be placed in the Jadoon's right hand, which is held decently. You can really tell it wasn't sculpted to hold this gun. Turning to articulation, the head doesn't move at all, which makes sense. There's a 360 degree twist on the shoulder, 360 degree on the elbow, which can also bend 90 degrees, and there's a 360 degree twist on the wrist. There's a 360 degree waist joint. The legs can slightly move out to the side, but this is hindered by the skirt. They can kick out about 45 degrees, turn 360 degrees at the top of the leg, and a final 90 degree bend at the knee. So some really good articulation for the Jadoon. So overall, I think this Jadoon is good. It's nice to get another Jadoon Trooper with a new gun to go next to the Jadoon Captain. But I just don't understand why they filled in the holes for the accessories. Apart from that, it's a really good figure. In the size comparison, Ryan and Yaz look excellent when put with the rest of the TARDIS team. And the Jadoon looks great when put with the Jadoon Captain. So overall, what do I think to this set? I think it's decent. The set was a bag of mixed feelings. I really love Yaz, the face sculpt is brilliant and the reuse of the Primeval mod really works, aside from a few errors. Ryan was a bit disappointing. The face sculpt is almost there and the outfit doesn't work at all. The Jadoon was nice, but the removal of the accessory holes is really annoying. This whole set is strange to me, as surely it would have made more sense to release Graham, Yaz and Ryan together and a Jadoon Trooper separately. People would be able to pick up tons of the troopers separately then, without having to get a bucket load of Ryan's and Yaz's. You also lose that ridiculous title. Much like the other sets, the main problem is the fact it's a b and exclusive, as fans struggle to get the sets due to scalpers buying them up and selling for ridiculous prices. So that concludes this review. If you liked it, please leave a like and tell me what you think in the comments below. If you enjoy Doctor Who content, then also subscribe to not miss any more figure reviews, as well as the Doctor Who fan series that is currently in production. Thank you all so much for watching, and until we meet again, goodbye.